you apply a force that varies here okay the you apply a force on the object and the force is not constant the force varies as a function of time now you ha impulse helps you a lot because you can integrate f dt right you can find the impulse that the object uh, uh, applies so we can ask here several questions find the impulse and v final and then part b find the work done on object and then c Let's say the time is four seconds again. So find J and V, find work done on J. What is, uh, what uh, I should say here, what if the M is changing at a rate of plus one kilogram per second, then answer the same questions here. So in order to find the J, now we need to integrate because the force is changing. So integral 2T squared plus T cubed from zero to four dT. You see, we can integrate the impulse. Then we can integrate the force to get the impulse. And we have uh, t cubed plus t to the fourth over four, zero to four. And we have uh, 64 plus, 64 also, right? 128. So the impulse is uh, 128 i hat Newton seconds. You see? So we integrated it, and we found the impulse that you impart on the object. So now we set that equal to the change in momentum. 128 i hat equals mv final minus mv initial, which was uh, uh, 5. So this goes over there. 138 equals 2v final. v final equals 60. Uh, nine, right? Meters per second. So not bad. You see, fast. Integrate the impulse, and then uh, set it equal to change in momentum. So for v final, sixty-nine meters per second. Then part B. Find the work done on the object. I don't have to. I don't have to do this, f dx. I don't. I mean, I I don't know the distance that it went. I could find it if I want to. It's not that hard. But instead of doing the work this way, I can set the work equal to the change in kinetic energy. Half mv final squared minus half mv initial squared. That's a quicker way. In this situation, it's a quicker way to find the work because I don't have the, the, the x. So I say half times uh, 2 times v final squared minus half 2 times v initial squared. And then I go work is uh, 69 squared minus v initial is 5, 5 squared. And that's the work that the force does on the object. So you're just using the work energy theorem setting it equal to the change in kinetic energy that's going to be quite a large work 
1,000 and 20 or 36. And that's joules. Okay, so we got the impulse, 128 newton seconds. We got the final velocity, we got the work. Okay, now we can analyze the situation a little differently too. What if the mass of this object is changing as a function of time? We've never done a problem like that before where we've always assumed the mass of object is constant. What if while you're doing this, let's say this happens to be a open bucket here, you're, while you're dragging it, it's raining. <laughs> you know? It's raining at a constant rate and the mass is collecting, uh, uh, the bucket is collecting mass. Or the opposite could happen. You could drag the object and maybe it could be a little hole in it and the water could be coming out. So I could give you uh, either situation I could say the mass is changing at a negative rate or at a positive rate. It's leaking mass, you know. So now how would the answers change? Well, the J would not change. The J would still stay 128 because it just depends on the force and the time. So that one doesn't change. The velocity will change. What do you think should happen? Should the final V be more than 69 or less than 69? If it's getting heavier, heavier as time goes on, uh, should the final velocity of this object uh, be less or more than 69? Less than 69, right? Always try to think of these things when you're doing problems. Try to anticipate the answer, you know, give a little prediction in your mind. So it should be less, you're right. Uh, M final, V final, minus M initial, V initial. So I can set the impulse equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum, and the final momentum is the mass final times V final. The mass final is what? Okay, how much mass is it going to have at the end of four seconds if it's gaining uh, one kilogram per second? Well, that's pretty easy to determine. M final is equal to 2 plus 4 seconds times the rate of 1 kilogram per second, right? 1 kilogram per second after 4 seconds, that's, it's gained 4 kilograms. So it's going to be 6 kilograms. Okay? So you put 6 kilograms here minus the initial mass, which is uh, 2 times the initial was uh, 5. So we get here uh, 138 divided by 6 equals V final. So it's going to be quite a lot less. Okay, way less. 63 meters per second is going to be the final velocity. Uh, even though it's the same impulse, but the velocity is not the same because it's gaining mass. Okay, and then the work done, half m initial v initial squared, and you could use that again, changing kinetic energy. So half times the final mass, which is uh, 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 6, right? Times 23 squared minus half times 2 times 5 squared. So the work should also be less because uh, it was getting heavier, 1,562 joules. So the work done is a ratio of about four. That one is four times more work than this one. Actually, no, a little bit, no, actually about three. About three times the work done. Okay, so now you kind of see a little bit of how the impulse is used. When the force is variable, when the mass is changing, it's a very, very powerful tool to find the, the impulse. And then from the impulse, you get velocity. And then from there, you can get to the work. Okay?